Okay guys, so we're gonna be talking about uh, revisions three here. So the truck is definitely, definitely starting to come around. Um, you know, it's been really fun um, going through, you know, a stock vehicle and making the changes, you know, and just kind of seeing how everything works out. You know, so I uh, hope you've been enjoying and following along and uh, hopefully, you've been, hopefully you've been using some of this stuff too. Um, so on this file, the first thing we're gonna go through and get rid of is the short-term fuel trims. This one's pretty common, um, you know, to go ahead and, and get rid of just for the reason that you don't really want the computer storing any bad fueling, uh, you know, errors or get a sensor go bad or something like that. You know, the computer will store that data, potentially, you know, more or less use it against you which you don't want, you don't want to have to deal with that. So I highly recommend disabling the short-term fuel trims. There's no negative side to doing it. Um, you know, especially on a big power combination that can be finicky and a camshaft that doesn't make good vacuum. You know, you don't want to have fueling errors that will cause the vehicle to potentially run, you know, poorly and be finicky, which, you know, you will get uh, with a big big combination like that um, the next thing we're gonna do which is pretty common which people need to be careful with and not go overboard with is we are gonna bump the rev limiter up from the factory I believe it's set at around 6 or 6100 somewhere in there so you know 63 is a, is a pretty 6300 is a pretty you know healthy limit for a vehicle like this um, you know, even for a car, that's a pretty healthy, you know, rev limiter for a, a stock camshaft uh, setup. Um, you know, so you can get a little bit more, um, you know, you can get a little bit more power and RPM out of it by, you know, raising that up. Another thing you can do too um, with the rev limiter is you can uh, alter the cut method, which is uh, a viable option. So spark is always going to be your fastest uh, way to, you know, shut things down or cut power out, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and so anything that has to do with fuel or the electronic throttle control, that's gonna all be slow, uh, especially the throttle blade. You know, really, especially if you had a forced induction vehicle, you would not want the fuel, you know, to be cut. So that's just something to, uh, just something to consider. Um, you know, and we'll go into the torque management as well and make sure that the fuel and the throttle, you know, cuts have been disabled uh, from being enabled from the factory. You really, Spark is really the only one that you need. Um, another thing we're gonna go in and do is we're going to speed up the knock recovery rate. You know, uh, a 0.2 or a 0.3, even a 0.4 or 5 is gonna be fast enough to speed up uh, you know, the recovery rate if the PCM pulls any timing out you know, it will decide to add it back in very quickly. So we haven't changed anything with the knock sensors in this uh, truck. There's no reason to go into the calibration and change a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff you definitely don't want to shut it off. Um, but just speeding up the recovery rate, you know, is a, a, a nice little nice little trick. Um, you know, and then uh, the next thing we'll do. Um, is we'll go in and we'll uh, take some of the torque cuts out, you know, under the torque management section again, the the fuel and the electronic throttle, and that'll just help this thing uh, when it does try to, you know, take some of the power out. It, it won't close the blade or, or shut the fuel down, anything like that. And the last one is we're going to go into the transmission and we're going to speed up the shift timing. So the uh, the TCM's ability to, uh, you know shift the transmission quickly um we want to just speed that up just a little bit not too much nothing crazy but just a little bit is going to be uh beneficial so we'll go in here and at the lower uh torque uh you know reported torque areas we'll go with like a 0.45 or a 0.5 and then in the higher torque regions a 0.2 or 0.25 and then we'll blend in between. You only need to copy and paste these to your direct upshift tables. You don't need to do anything with the skip shifts or the down shifts or anything like that. So we'll roll with this for the, uh, 
you know, for the uh, revisions number three, this thing is driving really, really well. Um, you know, it definitely moves out much better. The shifts are much crisper. Um, you know, I don't have a data log of it right now, but I will say that these 6L80s definitely are a, a great improvement over the four speeds and getting this thing into power and enrichment a little bit sooner like we did in the one of the previous videos it definitely gives it just a better overall mouth feel so to speak you know so i um, hope you guys have been enjoying the videos and uh, like comment subscribe uh, down below if you got any questions and yeah we will see you in the next one peace